What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this digital collage uh, of London that I made the other day. Um, just to add into all the collections of collages that I'm making for this channel, another tutorial for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy. I'm going to leave all the images in the description below. Just a link, download it, and then you'll have all the files, which should be a PSD for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy it. There's a few techniques you need to learn. If you watch my tutorials, you shouldn't have a problem with them. So let's get straight into the video. Okay guys, welcome back. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do for this design is create our background. So this is the size I'm gonna be using, 1080 by 1350. So if you copy that, the design will fit perfectly. So first what we're gonna do is create that. Now we're gonna create a background layer. So this is gonna be a light blue in this case. So you just need to go to your rectangle tool, select a blue. So this is gonna be the hex code for it, 8EDCF3. So that's the hex code. Just type that in if you want the exact same color as me or use a different color, that's fine. And then what you're gonna do once you've got your rectangle tool selected, just drag it over the top so it covers the whole background. So once you've done that, that's the first step to doing the first bit of the design so we've got our background layer so we can name that BG for background that's done now you can create your next shape if you want to or you can do that later so I'm gonna do that later the first thing I'm gonna do is start cutting out the images that we're gonna use so if I drop all these in and then I'll get right back to you right guys welcome back so the first thing I'm gonna do now is cut out all the images that we're gonna need for this design so the first design the first image that I'm going to cut out is this building image. So you can cut as much out as you want, but I'm only going to cut a certain section. So I'm going to select my pen tool and make sure it's selected to path. So not shape, you want it on path. And then if you zoom in, you can um, find the angle that you want. So I'm just going to go from the top here and just go along the roof of the building. So once you've done this, you can um, start clicking away and making your design. Depending on how much of the building you want is how much you're gonna cut out, obviously, and how much work you'll have to put into the line. I'm only gonna go to here. So this is just because I want the angle, so I want something to sit on the angle of the building. So I'm just gonna go to here, and then I'm gonna go all the way down, and then back along the bottom, and then right there. So, so we've got our work path. Now we're just gonna make a selection out of that. So if you go to paths, click it, and then click selection down here you'll make a selection. Now once you've done that, you wanna go back to your layers and then you're gonna click layer mask. So now we've already cut that image out. So that looks good. The next thing we're gonna do is probably um, add that layer mask to the design. So if you right click on the layer mask and click apply layer mask, that'll make this object just a solid like so we've got it now. That's done. So the next thing I'm gonna do is cut this next image out. So what you need to do here is quite technical. So we're gonna go around and just cut out the background. So if you wanna just get the quick selection tool, which will make it a lot quicker, um, and then you're just gonna select all the outline. And the same again this time, we're just gonna unlock it, and then we're gonna layer mask it out if we inverse it first, and then we're gonna layer mask it out. So basically we've cut the background out apart from these bits in here which we can do quickly later on, but that's all we need to do for now. And then once again, we're just gonna right click and apply the layer mask. The next thing we're doing is cutting out the underground sign. So this one's a bit more technical. So you're gonna use the pen tool um, again, start from wherever you want and just sort of just go at it slowly. It doesn't need to be done quickly. As you can see, I'm no pro at using the pen tool either. So if you don't get it right first time, don't worry. Uh, if you don't know how to use the pen tool, that's fine as well. I've got a tutorial on my channel explaining how to. I'll leave that in the link uh, in the description below just for you guys to watch, just in case you do not know how to use it. So once I've got bottom part of the sign cut out, I'm just gonna sort of make sure I keep the shadow in. You don't have to do this, but it depends how much of the sign you want to show. So I'm only gonna show to like, and then I'm just gonna go back up and do the same on the other side. Obviously I'm doing this quite quick and rough, but obviously take all the time you need. You don't need to rush this part because otherwise it will just look stupid. And then that, so we've got the selection around it. So once again, we're just gonna go to paths and then click the selection button. So we've got that now, and then we can just layer mask it out again. So it doesn't look perfect. Uh, if you wanna refine it a bit, you can double click on the layer mask and then just shift the edge in a bit. If you wanna make it look better, if you don't wanna make it look better, it's up to you. It's complete personal preference. So I'm just gonna shift the edge a little bit so it just cuts off a little bit of the mistakes I made. So that's that done. Now we're gonna cut out this last image. Now this is gonna take some time. You're gonna to need to use the pen tool for this 
and it's going to be quite intricate so I suggest that you take your time with this because this took me a while before so I'm going to cut it out now I'm going to speed this part of the video up just so it doesn't take too long for you guys to watch but experience with the pen tool so it's not going to take me as long as you guys probably unless you are experienced yourself but once again link in the description there'll be a video explaining it if you don't understand so let's get straight into it okay guys welcome back so once you've got to this stage um, you should have a few little bits in between of the letters that you need to cut out so just do the same again get the pen tool go inside cut away basically just make your selection select it and then you can get a paintbrush tool and just brush it away so it's gone like so or you can just do the same and then lay a mask to get out it's completely up to you guys um, I'm just gonna brush it away real quick just because it makes it quicker for me but yeah hopefully that wasn't too challenging for you guys obviously challenge some of you because obviously it would be a bit boring if I didn't but yeah so that's all the imagery cut out that we need the next thing is just going to be layering it up in the design and then adding some and then adding the camera raw filter at the end just to complete the design also you can add some texture over the top if you would like but I didn't add any because I just felt like the design looked good enough on its own. So let's move on to the next stage. So, right, we're going to drag this image in first because this is going to be the first design we're going to use. So I'm going to drop this in and then we're just going to make sure we position it in the corner of the page. Now, it's a bit big for me at the moment. So obviously you can have it angled. You can put it whatever way you want, really. So I'm going to have it about there. Something like that. That looks good. Now what we're going to do is get the next bit, which is going to be the sign. And we're going to drop this in probably around the top area somewhere. So now that we've got that, oh yeah, we need to apply the layer mask as well. There we go. Just going to put this probably somewhere up here. And you can move the building down if you want. So if I just go back to my first design for a reference, as you can see I had it pushed along quite a bit. So I can obviously do this and then just stretch it a bit more. And then actually, there we go. And then we just put this behind there. So that is quite good. So we've already got the first two components of the design. So the next thing I'm going to do is add a pink circle up here, which is where the second building is going to sit. So if you go to your shapes panel, get your ellipse tool and then select a pink color, which is going to be this hex code for me, F9 AD E4. So I've got my hex code, got my color, and then just going to hold shift and drag. There's your pink circle. Doesn't need a stroke, doesn't need anything fancy. Put it all behind the design and then put it up in the corner. It's not going to be exactly the same as the first design because I'm not copying it exactly. I'm just using the techniques I use in that design to show you guys now. So we've got the circle, we've got our first two images. So we just need to add in the last two images and then add some text along the top here. So 202, if I go back to the previous design, 202 is going to be um, the area code of London so it just it's just sort of a little link back to their, their area code so you know what it's about so if I just go 202 I just need to change this color to black then I need to change the font if I just go up here it's called Red Hook the font looks pretty good in my opinion obviously you can um, you can position the, the, the numbers wherever you want so I've got them quite big there they're a bit bigger than on the original design I like the font so I think it should stand out more so that's why I've done it so right we've got the images done I can delete these now now we're gonna grab our emergency sign we're gonna take this and drop it in here so obviously as you can see it's not like it's not in the right angle so what you're gonna need to do is select your image and then we're just gonna command T so we're in a transform tool and then we can just go to perspective now as you can see this is quite a uh, a good tool when you're playing around with shapes because you obviously you want to make it look realistic uh, this design is going to be quite hard to actually fit along the edge so what I'm going to do is probably have to um, sort of angled. So you can use other ones. So like skew's pretty good. Skew's good, but there's it's it's quite hard to uh, get it perfect if you know what I'm saying. So something like that, it doesn't look great. I can't remember exactly what I used to do it. I think it might have been distort actually. So if I distort it and then drag it out a bit more. Yes, it was distort. Now I remember perfectly. Just drag it out like so. Obviously, you want it to look like it is sat on the edge of the building. So something like that works quite nicely, actually. Position it on the edge of the building like so. Now it looks quite good. Now it looks like it's coming up the edge of the building. So we put it below that so it looks like it's actually stuck on the building. That looks quite good. Now, the letters look a bit funny, but I think they look good because the collage isn't meant to look perfect. It's meant to look like the layers are stuck like on top of each other. So that looks good got the text we've got the most of the images we just need one more image now which is going to be this design so what I'm going to do is drag and drop it in 
and then we're just going to position it where we see fit. So I'm going to move the pink circle down a little bit and then I'm just going to position this where I think it should go. Now you don't want it to cut off this, the page but you want it to be big enough so you can see it. So what I'm going to do is rasterize this shape. So if I go to right click on the shape, rasterize, and then what I need to do is go to select load selection so I've got my load selection now you can sort of tell what we're going to do we're going to layer mask this shape out so once we've done that there you go it cuts off the top of the building so what we want now is to paint that back in so make sure you've got your white brush selected and then we're just going to paint the top of the building back in you can paint as much as you want now but just make sure that it looks realistic enough now you don't want to paint the bottom of this building in so this is where it comes becomes quite technical so you want this edge here cut off so if you go to your brushes and get a hard brush that is what is going to make this design look good so if you change black back to black and just start cutting away at that so you obviously you don't want to show the pink of the building but you want to make it a harsh edge and look realistic so i've got that now now that looks pretty good if i just zoom out in a minute i'm just going to make sure i put this below the building so it doesn't look stupid if i zoom out now you can see what i've done so i've cut it out but obviously i need to move the that as well um, so I've cut the building out around the circle which is a good technique to know which is layer masking I've made sure that the text along here is sort of angled properly properly now you can play around with that more but I've just done it quickly so the video isn't too long for you guys just so you understand what I've done layered up the rest of it and added some text now the last thing we're gonna do is add a camera or filter after I've cut out the shapes of the top of this building just to finish the design off because you don't want that there so what I'm going to do is just get a pen tool and then just quickly quickly create um, a shape of what the background is and then I'm just going to cut away basically so if I just do that go to path there you go cut it out and then I just need to make sure I've got that layer selected just like so it's not very hard so if you do that a few times you can basically get rid of everything that you don't like in the design Okay, so we've got our layer now we're ready to hit the camera or filter stage so make sure you've layered it all up and then made it one layer so it's not separate layers and then go to filter camera or filter and then we can start adding in different textures so if you want to change like the temperature and stuff of the design you can do I might add a bit of yellow in maybe a bit of exposure a bit of contrast just to make it look a bit more realistic highlights you can bring them down if you want it a bit more colorsome so it's complete personal preference texture you can bring up clarity dehaze yes 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 you can do all of it vibrance saturation if you want to bring it out color make color a bit more stronger curves you don't really need to mess with too much the main thing we're going to mess with in this is the sharpening just to make the images look crisper and then we're going to mess with the effects at the bottom so effects is where it's going to be really really important so effects you can add grain over the top now, as you can see that's too much it looks really bad but obviously grain grain is what makes designs look old and look complete so collages use them a lot especially digital collages they use them a lot just because it actually makes all the layers look like they are one and it doesn't make them look like they have been layered on top of each other so now that I've got my grain in here you can see it brings the design together a lot more and you can have the size bigger you can have the roughness less uh, you can have it more and then what we're gonna do is probably add the slightest vignette so minus 10 so you can copy these effects and your design should look exactly the same as mine as long as you've copied what I've done so that's all I'm gonna do for this now you can add some color grading if you want or color mixer play around with the colors of the red on the sign and stuff doesn't really need to be done that's about it really for this design so as you can see now that I've added the grain in you can see it all over the blue and all over the images it just makes it look more complete so now that I've done that that's all I need to do for the design thank you for watching this tutorial guys hopefully it's been helpful hopefully you've learned from it um, if you have let me know in the comments let me know if you want to see more of these videos um, and that's about it guys thank you for watching the video and I'll see you in the next video